So in this paper, we ask the following question. When we invest in energy efficient strategies, what sort of rebound effects can we anticipate and what are the consequences for policies? A rebound effect occurs when we take action to reduce energy consumption, but we end up with less savings than what we anticipate. For example, we can reduce lighting energy consumption in our houses by 75% by installing more efficient light bulbs. If we leave the lights on for the same period of time, we'll indeed save 75% of the lighting electricity consumption. However, since the lighting service has effectively become cheaper, we may decide to leave the lights on for longer periods of time. Why not? We're saving energy and money at the same time. This will result in having less savings from electricity than what was anticipated. This is called the direct rebound effect. And now, what if we actually use the savings from that energy efficiency intervention to travel to Europe or to buy goods and services that we're not purchasing in the first place? This may increase our carbon or energy footprint. And so this is called the indirect rebound effect. So how much is the rebound effect? Well, the studies vary widely with some estimates as low as zero or as high as 60% or more, depending on the region of analysis, the end use under study, and the time period of analysis, for example. And why is looking at rebound effects important? Well, because if we do not account for rebound effects, we may be overstating the potential impact from energy efficiency measures, and so that may have consequences for policy design. This makes it challenging to determine whether states are meeting their energy efficiency resource standards. What are energy efficiency resource standards? Energy efficiency resource standards require utilities to reduce energy consumption through energy efficiency programs. 20 states have these standards and seven other states have similar goals, reaching overhaul 100 million customers. So are the states measuring their progress towards those goals accurately? In this work, we seek to answer that same question. So how did we determine the indirect rebound effects in this work? So in this work, uh, we couple a neoclassical economics model of consumer behavior with an input-output model of the economy that provides the life cycle emissions and energy consumption for all the goods and services in the economy. So our analysis provides a first-order estimate of indirect rebound effects we also show how those differ by states as a function of carbon emissions factors, consumption patterns, and so forth. So what are the annual direct and indirect rebound effects for each of the 50 states? So the first step in assessing the magnitude of those rebound effects is to establish a baseline. So our first step was to compute the household carbon footprints for each of the 50 states. We found that the carbon footprints for each of the 50 states differs quite substantially. The figure highlights that the carbon footprints differ widely from state to state, due in particular to differences in grid emissions factors and also on household patterns of consumption. We then simulated the rebound effects. In the figure, you see the magnitude of the rebound effects and potential savings from a 10% improvement in energy efficiency in electricity. The white bars correspond to the potential savings from that intervention. The color bars correspond to the rebound effects. You'll notice that the color bars are really small in comparison to the white bars. Overall, we find that the rebound effects are small. However, those differ quite substantially from state to state, and they can be as low as 6% in West Virginia and as high as 40% in California. So after all this work, what are our recommendations for the policymakers? So first of all, policymakers should assess the magnitude of direct and indirect rebound effects, in particular when they are aiming for the goals for their energy efficiency resource standards. In case those are large, they should be considered in the policy analysis. The presence of rebound effects highlights the importance of complementing uh, carrot sorts of incentives with sticks, such as carbon prices or carbon standards. And finally, we find that overall rebound effects are small, so they should not put into question energy efficiency policies.